Hey, it's your girl Janae, and welcome to this week's episode of Professionally Childish. Look, I'm kind of in fair girl mode today um, because it is Aquarius Nation in here, and I have the beautiful Miss Evelyn Jessica Rich in here with me today. Look, want to say hey? I do. Um, I'm very excited to be here, and it's baby's first interview, so I know. know. Go, go easy on me. Go but easy I promise on me. I'll, I promise I will go easy on you. Um, we're going to have some fun okay. and hopefully people get to know a little bit about you. Absolutely. I'm excited. I am too. Um, so this week I kind of want to get into um, women's empowerment and okay. um, some self-care okay. and stuff, but also talk about your book. Okay. And if people have been following me um, and really paying attention to what I've been posting, you all have seen that I have been promoting Dirty Stilettos, yes. which is like one yes. of my, look, and and I love to read. And so for me to kind of knock out some stuff, I'm like, she's in like top five right now. Yeah, <laughs> Look, and I, I'm patiently waiting on part two. But um, like I said, it, it's a great, great book. Um, it took me in from the very first chapter. Yes. Um, and like I said, it was just amazing. So before we get into the book, though, okay, I kind of want you to let us know a little bit about yourself. Okay, well, my name is Evelyn Jessica Rich, of course. I am a new novelist. Um, I have been enjoying the creative process so far. Um, I'm going to refrain from uh, sharing my nine to five at the moment because I want, you know, people to kind of figure it out. (laughs) (laughs) People to kind of figure it out. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I want to appear to be a little bit more mysterious than what I am. You know, really am. (laughs) Sure. Because, look, I was totally shocked and amazed when I found out. I was like, oh, that's, you know, it explained a lot. And I was like, it was very intriguing. Yes, yes, yes. Um, like I said, we'll talk a little bit about self-care and everything. And, you know, you and I have talked um, privately about some things. And I was, you know, asking you, and this is geared towards your nine to five, because, yes. um, you know, on the path to self-love and really getting to know yourself yes. as women, you know, sometimes we lose ourselves and right. we get caught up in the day to day, get mm-hmm. caught up in our kids and get caught up in really just life. Mm-hmm. And so we have to take some time out to love on ourselves. And so what I started doing, I actually started um, working out more and good. and meditating and good. reading, like good. reading your book. Good, good, <laughs> like, good. And that was one of the things. And so as I was getting ready for this interview, I found out something about you that sparked some interest. Ah, and I was like, tell, yeah. Tell. So a little birdie on the street told me that you have a pole fitness center. I do. I do. I do. So I am the owner of a pole fitness studio here in town. Finesse Pole Fitness. Shameless plug. <laughs> Look, plug on, plug on. Yes, we are located um, actually 50, uh, 5401 Gunboat. So here in this very plaza and 5751 Mildred Road. So we have two locations. Okay. Look, yeah. so let's dive a little bit deeper. What inspired you to start a, a pole studio? Oh, man. Do we have time? It's a long story. Look, girl, we got time. Okay, 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 okay. So my discovery of a pole was definitely um, a happy accident. Um, I basically took a class with a friend, and it was her idea, to a class with a friend one day. She hated it. I loved it. And I never stopped going to class. Um, as time went on, I was like, huh, if pole makes me feel this way, I bet it could do the same for other women. And so I wanted to open um, just an adult-oriented dance space where women could just come in and um, be themselves and just connect with their fierce feminine movement. So you said a a key word in there, feminine. Uh Um, And that's something that, like, even as I – came into my 40s I was still trying to find a balance in it um and so what does femininity mean to you that is a really good question and I think I'm going to surprise you uh with the answer so with um femininity I think our minds automatically shift to uh the textbook kind of stereotypical definition like um get my hair done my makeup done uh 
dresses, uh, long hair, and kind of having like this certain aesthetic. But I think that, and at least for me, femininity is being able to connect with my authentic self, whoever she may be, you know? Like that right there. I've been searching for a way to put it into words. <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Right, because you your, your authentic self may not necessarily be getting my hair done, you know, every weekend or getting my nails done or wearing makeup. I mean, you may enjoy, you know, Chuck Taylors and, you know, a sweatshirt, but that doesn't make you any less, you know, feminine. That's true. So it's just finding that connection with your authentic self and just kind of discovering who Janae is or who Evelyn is. That's true. And and like I said, that's something that I found myself searching for because uh-huh. I am like when I think about who I am as a as a person and as mm-hmm. a woman, like I'm really laid back, really chill. Most of the time you right. see me in Jordans and things like that. Right. But it doesn't necessarily take away from my essence of womanhood. Yes, and exactly. So, yeah. Exactly, so, exactly. When when we think about femininity though, we also think about um sensuality. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. do those two go hand in hand or you know, how do you feel about that? I definitely think the two are cousins. So um, once again, just kind of looking at the word uh, sensual or sensuality, it just means gratification of the senses. So um, what are your five senses? Uh, What is it? Uh, Sight, touch, uh, smell, uh, hearing, seeing. So um, pleasuring all of those things. So how does that integrate with movement or dance? For me, like, how do I feel when I touch this chrome or touch this pole or how do I how how do I feel when I look at an audience or look at the audience and they they, they're they're watching me perform and I'm kind of giving a piece of myself so uh it's 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 pleasure like I've seen some like I've seen (laughs) some of the videos and and so like I did not know that we had a studio here yeah and so when I found out because I had always gone to Atlanta yeah and done it and so when I found out I was like oh Yes. Yes. Oh, my gosh. We yes. finally have something here for us. Yes. Um, and your studio is beautiful. Thank you. Um, thank you. Thank you. Like, I was in there. I was like, oh, they have the real pose. Yes. Yes. <laughs> um, and so really going into, like, womanhood and, and things like that, um, in a previous episode of this podcast, I was talking about, like, how society and sometimes men, you know, mm-hmm. kind of put a competition there for women Mm -hmm. and it's something that you know it's talked about but it's kind of it's like women being put against each other right and like we can't all be at the table together and everybody have their place at the table and you know and succeed right do you feel like it's a kind of secret competition in there I'm going to go against the grain and uh say that that is a myth much like how um Some demographics will say, oh, you know, that's black on black crime. Like, yeah, that's not real. Black on black crime is not real. Because if you go somewhere like Idaho or Utah and and somebody commits a crime, they wouldn't call it black on black, right? That's true. So, yeah, it's definitely a myth. Um, I will say um, in terms of uh, just um, competition women, I think the competition is us competing with ourselves, you know, and I think the friction uh, kind of happens there. So I may see you as a threat because I have my own internal insecurities that I have to deal with. You know, right? I agree with that yeah. one um, because I've always considered myself like a girl's girl. Like I want right. to see every woman win, and I right. feel like you know it's enough room for everyone course, and let's course. support each other. And of if course. it's something that, that you of don't course. know, and I know, like I want to share, I want to promote, of um, course. you know, because it's all about empowerment, of course, of all course. about empowerment. Um, of and so look, speaking of empowerment, <laughs> <laughs> um, like in the area we have, we have like women's empowerment luncheons and we have different events and things like that mm-hmm. for a collective, um, but how do you empower yourself? Oh, that is a good question. Um, so I'm going to circle back to just, uh, you know, pole fitness and even the writing. And I know we're going to talk about the book in a second. But um, I think being able to write and dance unapologetically uh, just kind of provides me with that sense of empowerment. And so those are the ta- the, the, the main two uh, platforms that... I like to use. 
And like I said, um, you need to get a following because sometimes you post little snippets here and there. <laughs> and like, I look, I'm like, look at her. <laughs> it's like you're in your own world. And yeah. It's like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I do have um, I do have another account that's uh, just for a uh, poll content. Um, but I, I think I would like to take you up on the offer and post a little bit more to the to to. Evelyn Jessica Rich and just kind of let people know more of who she is. Well, yeah, yeah. because look, <laughs> after like once people read the book, people will really want to know like who thought of uh, this stuff. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Stuff. All of the shenanigans. Yes. All of the shenanigans. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so like speaking of your book, you're coming down off of the high. You had your, your book signing. I'm still on the high. <laughs> you're still on it. Look, I, I can imagine. I I could imagine it. It's like a surreal experience. It is. It really know. is. Um, so coming, like coming from that big day, mm-hmm. how, how are you feeling? I'm, I'm feeling pretty good, actually. Um, I, I still can't believe that it's, that it's real, you know, um, you spend several months to a year, uh, pouring your soul into a project, um, for someone to read it in four hours, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> listen, I need that, instant that, gratification yeah, when that, I was reading. That, <laughs> that warms my heart, though it really does. That warms my heart. So you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy. So, if people are nosy like I am, I was on, <laughs> I was on your actual website, and I was like, she has a degree in biology. I do. Look, and look, and just to do a little drop in here, um, although you know. Albany State. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. Look, they have yes. look, you all have a game today. Yes, we do. We do. And, um, we do. Look, you know, we have a little joke between HBCUs and things like that because I went to Savannah State. But mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but you know, it's okay. HBCU love. Mm-hmm. Um that's, that's that's right. But you majored in biology. Mm-hmm. So where did this writer come from? Well, you know, um, since I am uh, the uh, a proud graduate of the unsinkable Albany State University, that just kind of like uh, uh, empowers me to just be more than one thing. So not just a bio major, but sure, I can be a writer. Um, this is a shameless plug for the World of Bray issue. But um, I've always had an interest in uh, writing short stories as a little girl and um, you know, you get the narrative, oh, you know, writers, they don't make any money and authors don't do much. Uh, let's, let's gently push you towards, you know, medicine or, you know, engineer or doctor. And I think that's the narrative in most, I think, black households, like, you know, and, 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 and it doesn't come from a place of, uh, you know, parents or anything or family or anything, not wanting to uh, believe in you or supporting you. I think it's just one of those survival things. So, now that I have the opportunity to really get into writing and to write more, I, I definitely want to take full advantage of it. I can agree with that mm-hmm. because um, I remember being a kid in yes. writing yes. and going and I entered my first writing competition. I think I was like in third grade. Yes. And um, when I won, my mom was kind of like, hold on uh-huh. now. Uh-huh. I didn't know that. Yeah, <laughs> but, right. you know, even when you go into college and you want to write, right. it kind of lead you towards education or you know or technical writing and things like that and I was like well no I want to write what I want to write write." exactly exactly so so for you when did that passion start for you do you remember like when it kind of clicked and you were like oh I want to do this let's see I will say maybe about 12 or or 13 maybe middle school, I was like, oh, yeah, I could, I could do this. I could, I could totally do this for um, a living. But, you know, you put that on the back burner and, you know, it ends up being a dream deferred. But, yeah. <laughs> but it happened. But it happened, it yes. Happened. <laughs> so, again, look, shameless plug. You guys, you got to read this book because it, it's one of those stories to where it it's sexual, but it's a very good storyline. Right. And so... Since this is your first um, novel, Mm -hmm. has erotica always been your niche? Has it always been your lane? Oh, yeah. So, like, um, if you uh, had the opportunity to um, kind of just uh, explore my website, you'll see that I I just kind of snuck around and and read some of my mother's uh, books. Probably shit that I wasn't supposed to be reading at, like, maybe 11 or 12. But, um, yeah, definitely um, Terry uh, McMillan, who, for her time, I think was didn't intend to be like a 
a provocative writer, but some of the her topics are, you know, a little pro- provocative, especially waiting to exhale. Like, she a 12-year-old girl doesn't have any business reading waiting to exhale, exhale but, you know, I would uh, sneak and read it anyway. I can agree. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then um, for high school and college, you know, my era with well, college really was um, Zane. So I think Zane just kind of pushed me over the edge with just wanting to have, uh, just wanting to explore erotica a little bit more. Look, Zane will definitely do yes, it for yes, you. yes. Look, this Shout is out. this is cold. Look, this yes. is totally off filter. But what's your favorite Zane book? Do you Ooh, have one? Oh, uh, it's so many. So, Addicted for sure, Nervous, and then uh, Sex Chronicles one. And yes, two. Look, and two. <laughs> 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 so, so I have like I have like this little stash of uh-huh. books, um, and I have all of my Zane books kind of yes. like put over in the, the corner, corner. Yes. because my daughter is fourteen, and I'm yes. like, and it's about that time, right? It's about that time start digging, digging into- <laughs> and I'm like, no, 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 don't read that. <laughs> like I'm like I'm so embarrassed, but so what inspired you to write Dirty Stilettos? You know. Um, I, I think this is just a, a domino effect from uh, 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 the uh, tea show. If you're uh, from Columbus, then um, there is a, an erotic arts platform called Tees, the Erotic Arts Experience. So that is uh, a showcase that I am co-producer for. And it started with that. I'm just like, okay, an erotic show, uh, and I like writing. Uh, it makes sense to maybe uh, write an erotic book. So the Dirty Stilettos component just came from just wanting to empower women, but with a twist, like make it dirty. <laughs> <laughs> it is definitely that. Yeah, but, make it dirty. But like when people ask me about the book, I mm-hmm. always say, I'm like, it's sex in there, but it's just different. Yes. And so... You know, when you think about like Zane's books and things like that and how the content and everything in it, some of it can get a little like way out there. Yes. But in your book, you approach sex in such a different way. Mm -hmm. What made you do it like that? D- define what you mean by different. So different. So me. so one of my so this is what I <laughs> what I have been describing to people. Okay. Okay. Um, when they ask me about the sex, I'm like, okay, so you know the sex scenes are there. I was like, but one scene in particular really it stuck out to me. Okay. Um, you were describing um the sexual stimulation, but you instead of saying another word, you said the pleasure, mm. and I was like, that. That right there, that just stuck mm-hmm. out mm-hmm. to me. And I was mm-hmm. like, now that was good. Mm-hmm. Well, I think it just comes from like um, a, a, as a writer um, and, and a little secret, I've, I've taken um, a, a creative writing cr- class during this uh, process of uh, writing the book. So uh, one of the uh, pearls that um, the instructor would drop is when crafting like a, gl- a really good plot is – show but don't tell right so it's easy to say "Hmm, Jonathan and Corey are getting ready to fuck I mean but that's That's (laughs) true but but that's like telling you want to uh, write in such a way that just kind of like draws and pulls your readers and you want them to be a part of the experience so that's why that showing part Look, is, you definitely is important. You, you, look, you showed a lot in this book because, like, you could literally close your eyes and, and imagine. Play in your head and you like could a play it like a movie. Yeah. And that's how I started. I was like, hold on, let me close my eyes and think about this. Yep. And I was like, yeah. Exactly, she, exactly. So that means I understood the assignment. You did. Yes. You understood it. You exceeded the assignment. Thank you. Um, and so when you were creating the characters mm-hmm. for the book, who was the most difficult for you to develop? Ooh, this is a... And I'm trying, you know, I'm trying to ask these questions without spilling too much tea. Right. Because we don't want to go too deep, but... Right. This is this is pretty tough. Who was the, who was the most challenging mm-hmm. to develop? Let me see. Actually, I'm I'm going to I'm going to say Corey. 
Really? Yeah, I'm going to say Corey. I think Corey was um kind of challenging because you can tell that uh, she comes from a decent background, so we think. Um, she's loyal to uh, the folks in her circle, to a degree, you know? Mm-hmm. And uh, I think she kind of wrestled with some decisions throughout the book. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you can you can definitely um, see that struggle mm-hmm. between... Like between love and betrayal, right, right, you can see it, right, right, right. And like I said, I like I want to tell so much, but I'm oh. like I can't tell the book. I, 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 like can't I, tell the book. You gotta <laughs> read it. Yes. Um. So on the flip side, who is the most fun? I, I'm going to actually say Jonathan for this one. Um, Jonathan was fun because you know I I, I had a chance and just kind of. Tap into my, you know, to my inner guy, like, yes, like, yes, I'm, like, kind of lean back, like, yeah, like, <laughs> and tap into my inner guy and just be like a whole dude in these streets, so. <laughs> but literally, <laughs> literally, you guys have to read this book, and I know I keep saying it, but you have to read this book, because yes. to fully yes. understand what we're talking about, and to have that aha moment, be like, mm-hmm, yes, yes, you have to read this book, and so... Um, I remember after I got like halfway through the book, mm-hmm. I messaged you and I was like, like girl, yes, <laughs> yes. And I was like, dirty stilettos. It yes. like all made sense yes. to me. Yes. And so it is symbolic. Um, and without giving too much, give give us a little insight on the symbolism with that. Um. So throughout the book, there are several like um, examples that we can use for symbolism. And I can name characters because if you haven't read the book, then you won't know what the hell I'm talking about. But for those that have, then it'll make sense. So like um, the dynamics between like White Russian and Jason and, and even Pavel, that's Dirty Stilettos, um, Corey and Natalia, that's. 30 stilettos, you know. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, yes. Yep. <laughs> like, <laughs> all of those, all of those relationship dynamics are, are really good examples of, of what that means. Even down to like what they do for a living. Yes. Yes. Well, well, well what they do for a living, Natalia and Corey. So, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, the- mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, Simone's involvement. 30. <laughs> Every, and you know the the thing about the book that really like pulls you in is like as you get deeper and deeper into the plot the betrayal it just yes. gets deeper and, and deeper yes and it is literally like a movie yes and it's like every time you think it's going one way Wait. it's like a plot twist it, and it's it like goes the other direction right. and it like stabs <laughs> you in the heart it's like <gasps> yes. a betrayal yes yes so Again, we won't give too much, but at the end of the book, you definitely left us with a cliffhanger. I did. So when can we expect part two? Are you working on part two? (laughs) (laughs) As soon as I finished, you know, I was like, okay, so where's part part two? two? Exactly. (laughs) Because I got some questions. Exactly. So um, maybe 2023. Which is around the corner. Yeah. Uh Uh-huh. Look, that's good. Yeah. And am I actively working on it? Yes. Okay. Look, I'll let you have that one. Okay. Like, (laughs) I'm like, I want to be like in the editor's room. I want to sit down and be like, I got questions. I promise I won't tell. I promise I'll keep it between us. Yeah. Should make you a a beta reader. uh, Yeah, for the next one. I know. Look, it was so good. I was like, so... (laughs) We've talked about the book and I've talked about promoting it and everything, but now we really do need you to plug. So where can we find your book? Yes, absolutely. So um, uh, Evelyn Jessica Rich, www.evelynjessicarich.com. Um, Dirty Stilettos is available on Amazon or you can um, order directly from uh, the website, my website. And look, I'm going to throw something else in here. For people who don't like to read, it's actually an audible. 
got to throw that out there. Yes. Um, Audible should be available soon. Yes. Right. It should. Uh-huh. It's coming soon, it's right? It's coming soon, But put yes. that in there because I know a lot of people were asking me. I have this one friend. She's like, <laughs> now, you know, I don't read. And I was but like, girl, I'm not listen. reading it to you. <laughs> like, So hold on. When, when they're working on, they're working on Audible and that will come out soon. Yes. Yes. So. Yes, we got to get ready for our our our, di- our dirty stilettos book club. <laughs> I, listen, I I ask about this book club, y'all, like every week. I'm like, so are we working on it? Because like I want to talk to people who have read this book, right? So that's coming right. soon too, right? Right. So I would like to give people the opportunity to read it, but it's kind of like when your um your favorite show comes out, and it's just like, all right, I'm gonna stay off Facebook and not make any comments about this show, but. You get seven days grace, <laughs> right? Because like, look, I'm giving. I'm you giving everybody it by like, now. <laughs> I'm giving y'all two months. Right. Christmas is next month, right. so go on if if you want to right. purchase the book. Cool. If if you want to buy the book for someone, mm-hmm. make sure you you know you go back and you listen to where you can find it, and then we can talk. Because after January first, I have no promises. I might just start dropping. <laughs> Right, right. I think that's fair. I think uh, the new year, the top of the new year is fair to start, you know, really discussing. Like, yeah. I, I agree. Yeah. And you're so. a little bit generous than I. I um, was initially thinking uh, maybe December the 1st. So Right. You, yeah. But like I said, I'm going to give people some time. Right, because it's the holidays. It's the holidays. Yeah. But, you know, put it on your Christmas list. Yes. Um, and if you are a friend of mine and you and you want the book, let me know because I don't mind purchasing. Um, so I have one last question for okay. you. And I promise it won't be too hard. Okay. Um, so I know that you are a girl's girl and you are here for women's empowerment and just pushing women forward. So my last question for you is what mark do you want to leave in, in that area or in any area? What mark do you want to leave to say, this is Evelyn Jessica Rich's legacy? If... I were to transition tomorrow and I had a headstone and I think I uh, referenced this on my website, I would like it to read, um, life is not a dress rehearsal, live it up and basically just be authentic. Um, That's what I would like to impart to others. That's a good message. Yep. Good message. Anything else you want to leave us with? I got a question for you. Sure. I know I'm the interviewee, <laughs> Look, but you I know, know I have right? a question for Look, you. I'm not prepared. Um, so, uh, no, no, it's easy. <laughs> Are you team Corey or team Jonathan? Oh, gosh. This is hard. I'm um, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Look, you put me on the spot. Um, so knowing the backgrounds, and it's going to sound like I'm, I'm just not for the ladies, mm-hmm. but I am... I'm actually Team Jonathan. Oh wow! I can't wait for us to talk about it like, <laughs> in, in, in book club. So I yes. know, and I can't give my reason, yes. but yes, I'll just know that you can give it off air. Offline. Yeah, I'll give it off yeah. air. But yes, I'm definitely Team Jonathan. Yes, yes. Um, but I thank you for sitting down and talking with us. Always. I like I appreciate you and your creativity. Thank you, thank you. Um, and like I said, I will continue to promote and support because yes. you are so dope. And I'm like, thank you, thank I you, love thank it. you. I don't know if authors have brand ambassadors or book ambassadors, <laughs> but yeah, you can you can definitely be mine for sure. So <laughs> I'm like, like, let's put it out there, yes. I'm ready to talk. Yes. But I thank everyone for tuning in today. Um, like always, everybody, just have a great week and smile and have a good time. If you want to follow me, you can follow me at Professionally Childish One on Instagram. Like the page, join the group on Facebook. And as always, if you want to be my friend, you can. I'm Janae Nicole, and thank you for tuning in.